I'm Daniel. I'm Jay-Z. And this is Just My DIY. Foiling is such a fun way to add a little pizzazz to all of your paper goods from envelopes to tags, thank you cards, save the dates, invitations, and more. In this video we'll be exploring three different methods for applying foil to cards using adhesive and or heat. That's right. Now a lot of videos out there make it seem really easy to do and it is once you figure it out. But we went through weeks of testing so we're not just going to show you how to do this. We're also going to talk you through the troubleshooting to help solve some issues that you may run into when you start foiling. That we did run into when oh, we mom. started foiling. <laughs> so many times. Yeah. So we're going to foil up. Okay. We'll start by foiling with a laminator. Now the laminator that we have chosen is actually the Heidi Mink Mini, and this is specially designed for foiling. So it has five heat settings, which are great for the variety of materials we're gonna show you. So we're preparing some cardstock by printing it out on our Canon laser printer. The toner becomes very important in this. Because the toner is what gets heated and activated for the foil to stick to, we actually found that a deep navy worked the best for us to get the best application of toner and therefore foil. So we're going to cut the foil to size and place it over completely over the toner. We don't want any toner exposed. We're going to fold up a piece of regular copy paper and feed it through the mink machine. For a basic cardstock, we found the setting of four on the Mink Mini to be great. Now, Mink Minis do come in other sizes, but once they do... They're not many anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but they still make things just as pretty. Yes. So as you see, that came right out of the Mink, and we just peeled it right off, and it was perfect. Now we're going to try a printable vellum. Yeah, it comes out with the... We're using, again, a navy color toner application. Mm -hmm. And just to show you, this is how it will overlay onto an invitation. So we cut the foil to size. We don't want to waste foil, so we didn't want to cover the whole sheet. And we're going to put that in our envelope. Now, because vellum's a little thinner than cardstock, we are on a setting of three in the meek. And you'll notice that I was holding it on the front there so that piece of foil did not move. So of course, we're going to open it up. Massage it down just a little bit to make sure all the toner caught. And then peel it. And that's how it turned out. And we'll show it to you behind, or I guess in front of the invitation. Last thing we're gonna do in the mink is gonna be a laser printable envelope. It takes a minute to discover which direction is up or <laughs> sideways or any other direction. But once you get it to come out, there it is. It looks great. Now for the envelope, we are putting a piece of cardstock in it along with a piece of Teflon. The cardstock is to keep all the creases from interfering and the Teflon is just in case we activate that adhesive on the envelope. We don't want it to stick close. So we put the piece of foil on top and you'll notice we're on a setting of five on the mink. That's because this is thick and we wanted to do the best it can, but we're not sure. So we pull out the brayer and we bray it. <laughs> Give it just a little bit of extra pressure and when we peel that off, wow, it looks great. We don't stare at it too long because we do want to make sure that we get all that stuff out of the envelope just in case the adhesive was activated. Luckily, it was not this time, but it did once before. And there it is. Shiny. So we're going to show you a couple of things we had to learn about troubleshooting laminator foil problems. So starting off, we're going to go ahead and tell you we messed up a lot and found that it was best to test on small pieces so we did not waste materials. It took a lot of testing and learning to get to the point where we were, so conserve your materials and use small pieces. But I got a question. Who's engaged? We are! Yay! <laughs> so here's the Scotch laminator. It is a fine laminator. It does come with two settings. It just wasn't quite right for what we were trying to get done with this toner style foiling process. That's right. So not every laminator is going to work. We ended up with the mink because we were tired of testing and wanted something purpose made. Even running the prints through the scotch five times, it never quite took hold. So you can see like this kind of problem where the toner isn't fully grabbing, probably says there isn't enough toner. So we go through 1200 settings <laughs> to try and find ways to turn up all of our toner placements. 
That's right, we were trying to get our laser printer to just dump more turner down, which again, we ended up with the navy, which worked. But keep in mind, if you're printing somewhere like a FedEx, which you absolutely can, the self-serve machines don't let you increase the quality, so you have to ask them to print it in the back where they can increase the quality. And also, if you're getting kind of splotchy foil, you may be your paper. Not all papers will work. We love this cardstock from Michaels because it's a nice smooth cardstock while still having a nice weight to it. Also, if you end up with too much heat, you can see that the foil itself will wrinkle up and that wrinkling pulls it away from the toner, making it look... Uh, Bad. Disengaged. <laughs> disengaged. Get it? Oh, wow. <laughs> Last tip is to make sure if you're not getting a full application again, try rubbing it while it's hot. This will help adhere a little more foil to the still hot toner. And now we're going to pull out a heat press to foil. So it's the same heat activated on laser toner method, just a different way to get it hot. So we're going to print out our first part of our image on an inkjet. The inkjet ink doesn't attract foil. But when we feed it through our laser printer, when you know how to align it correctly, it prints out and you get the toner in the middle of what you're aiming for. Now we are gonna use a Cricut Easy Press and a just a plain firm mat from one of our larger heat presses actually. Same process, we're gonna put it inside an envelope, put the foil over the toner. Fold it inside the envelope and press it, this time through 15 for about 10 seconds. We're probably at a medium pressure on that too. And a good massage later. I need her to work on my shoulders. <laughs> As you see, that worked great. The inkjet ink stayed, the laser on top. It was just such a nice layering effect. Now, this is still printing out in a dark navy toner. It helps apply more toner for your adhesion mm -hmm. pleasure. At least it did for us. And again, we're just doing the same thing, 3, 15, 10 seconds, but we're on a cool part of the mat, which we'll talk about more in a little bit. Look at how well that turned out. Hello, winter. <laughs> so here we have some troubleshooting for heat pressing foil. So the first thing is you want to be really mindful of the surface you are pressing on. It can't be really squishy. You need a nice firm heat resistant surface that is smooth as well. So again, this is a pad from one of our big heat presses. If you don't have a big heat press, you can actually purchase one on Amazon, just the pad. Now, when it comes to time and temperature, you don't want too, many, too much heat going through, but if you're gonna play with a setting, play with one setting at a time. Change either the time or the temperature. But generally in this ballpark, we played with 310 to 315 for anywhere from 10 to 15 seconds before we found our... Sweet spot. Yeah, baby. <laughs> now, speaking of spots, make sure you're pressing on a cool spot each time. This foil is very heat sensitive, and if you're on a hot spot, we actually found that even at the correct time and temperature, we still got the wavy foil, um, so we learned to press on a cool spot. So now we're going to use an adhesive to do the foiling. A few adhesives. Ooh. <laughs> Here's the Heidi Swap pen. This is actually the thin glue pen that they produce. Mm -hmm. And you do have to prime it, but once it's primed, it applies just like any paint marker. We're going to use it gently. We're just trying to accent the difference between the two blues. We're going for a nice little distress line, which is fine tip glue pen is great for. So once it's applied, we're going to put our strip of foil across it and we're going to bray it down and massage it in place and importantly, let it dry. But this dried really quickly, which was nice. And now we have a beautiful distress line, just a touch of foil accent on this invitation, which we adore. Now we're going to try a double-sided adhesive. This is some 3M adhesive that we actually bought for laser projects, but thought we'd give it a try here. So we're going on a piece of cardstock when we're applying it back to back. Like a sandwich. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Paper sandwich. And we're going to cut it out on the Glowforge. Now importantly, if you're in the market for a Glowforge, we have a referral link in the description, which will give you up to $500 off your purchase and give us a little something in return. And that brings us back to actually applying this method <laughs> to our 
invitation in this case. Save the date, absolutely. Now you could have cut this on a Cricut or if you have a Cricut or something like that. Um, but the important thing is just to get it to the shape that you want and then peel the backing once you have your placement. And once it's placed, you peel, you cut your foil to the shape so mm -hmm. you're ready. And then peel the adhesive off the front of it and apply your foil. You're gonna massage this down with some good effort and bray it and it starts peeling itself. Which is really nice. That's how we knew everything was as adhered as it was going to be, which turned out to be a really nice application. Um, so we love having that brayer for that nice even pressure. And it and gives a great 3D look effect. It does. I love that little bit of raised on the card. But there is always some troubleshooting, <laughs> even with adhesives. A lot more with adhesives, actually. We kind of struggled at first with the adhesives because we quickly learned that not every adhesive will work. We tried craft glue, we tried a tacky glue, we tried a spray adhesive, and just didn't always have great results. Or hardly ever had great results. <laughs> Importantly, let your glue dry completely before you peel off the foil, otherwise you end up with wet, soppy, messy foil. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, you should know that if there is too much glue, too wet of a glue, it can warp your paper from the moist oh, sure issues. Man. <laughs> so here are all of our successful projects. We had so much fun learning how to foil. There you go. We hope this video helped you learn how to foil, whether you're going to try it with a heat application or adhesive. And if it did, then you should go ahead and like the video, subscribe and ring the bell, tell us in the comment line how it foiled your plans. <laughs> and of course, everything that we used to do this is listed out in the description. Also in the description are links to all of our social handles. Please connect with us across platforms. We love hearing from you. And don't forget to check out our blog at JustMikeDIY.com. Thanks for watching.